Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my Bout of Books wrap up video. In case you guys aren't aware, Bout of Books is a week long readathon that takes place a couple of times a year and I try to participate whenever I can. And it's a readathon where you make your own goals, which is one of the reasons why I really like it. So my goal for the readathon was to read three books this week at minimum. I was really hoping for four and I definitely hit four so I'm very excited about that. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the books that I read this week. So the first book that I finished, I believe, it was first or second, um, is Quesadillas by Juan Pablo Villalobos and this was translated by, they never put the translator on the front cover of this which really annoys me, translated from the Spanish by Rosalind Harvey. I read Down the Rabbit Hole a couple of years ago and I really loved it. This one I didn't love quite as much and I think it's because this is a satirical novel and I definitely didn't know that going into it. I have like issues in general with satirical novels, like I never think they're quite as clever as they're supposed to be or that other people view them to me. I think I just like straightforward stories so much better. Maybe I'm just a simpleton like that, but just give me the straight story. But there are a lot of really interesting ideas covered in here. The story takes place in this small town in Mexico where there are notably more cows than there are people. Um, and you are following this one poor family where there are six sons and the mother just makes quesadillas for their family all the time and the narrator talks about how you can tell how well they're doing based on like the size of the quesadilla, like how much cheese is in them and how many they can eat. And then two of the boys, a set of twins, go missing and so on the one hand the narrator, who's one of the sons, is obviously sad that their bro his brothers are missing but at the same time he's also excited because that means more quesadillas for him and then it just sort of starts a whole slew of adventures. The way this book is set up there is this sort of like overarching story that is being told but at the same time a lot of these chapters sort of felt like individual essays and individual commentary on like the political system that was happening in Mexico in the 1980s as well as like revolutionaries and their whole form of rebellion that was affecting all of these poor people in the city. There's a lot of commentary in terms of like class and the way like money is handled and the economy is handled and things like that. So I like this book, I didn't love it. Um, like I said, I'm just not big on satire and also the ending's super weird. But I've also read reviews on Goodreads of people saying that the ending makes more sense if you read it in Spanish because of the way that the story is told. It makes more sense in Spanish, which I'm willing to believe as well. So that's just a thing. But I do recommend it if you like Down the Rabbit Hole, but don't expect it to be like Down the Rabbit Hole. Or if you're someone who likes satirical novels a lot, then I would definitely recommend this book. The next book that I read was The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I picked this one up because basically everyone in the comment section told me that this was a really great read and a really fast read and that's definitely true. I read this in a couple of days. In this story you are mainly following these two characters, Natasha and Daniel. Natasha is this girl who was born in Jamaica but then moved to the United States when she turned eight years old and has now been living in the United States illegally after their visas expired. She is now in her senior year of high school and getting ready for college and then she finds out that her and her family are about to be deported. So she goes into Manhattan to sort of find a lawyer who can help her stay in the United States. While she's in Manhattan she runs into Daniel. Daniel is this Korean American boy who is on his way to an interview with a Yale alumni to help him get ready to apply to Yale even though he doesn't really want to. So these two characters meet and it sort of is just like the start of their love story except for the fact that you know Natasha is about to be deported. So this story all takes place over the course of the day and the chapters are broken up between Natasha's point of view and Daniel's point of view and then there are a couple of chapters interspersed in here from other characters point of views that you meet throughout the story. Like Natasha goes to meet a lawyer and she talks to the secretary and then the next chapter is from the secretary's point of view. I really like this book. I gave it a four out of five stars on Goodreads. I think it's closer to a three and a half for me personally just because like in general love stories are harder for me to like super love like they're not my favorite types of stories but there's a lot of really great stuff that's discussed in here in terms of like being the child of immigrant parents and what it means to just grow up in the United States these days and there's a lot of talk of love in a greater sense. There's obviously a lot of discussion about romantic love but there's a lot of discussion as well about like family love and showing love to strangers and the way that strangers interact each other. Also because there are a lot of chapters in here told from the point of view from a lot of like peripheral characters you get to see how like the main characters view these people but then you see things from their point of view and you see that things aren't necessarily always the way that it seems which is really fantastic. If you follow me on Goodreads you would have seen me put up a status that said something like this is giving me more feels than I expected and it's because there's a lot more depth to the story than I expected there to be. I just thought I would 
going to be like a fun read. And it is a fun read, but there's definitely a lot more happening here. The next book that I finished was Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Um, this is another book that I picked up because a lot of you guys said that this was a really quick read, and it definitely was. I read this in two days. So in the story, you are basically following these three moms, mainly. They all have kids who are starting kindergarten. There's a lot happening in the stories. There's obviously just like the general, like, mommy politics that are being explored and especially like once your kids start school and they start interacting with other kids and then you having to deal with other parents at the school but there's also a lot of stuff happening in each of these individual moms lives and obviously I don't want to get too far into it because spoilers but it deals with a lot of like deeper darker issues like abuse that I wasn't really expecting in the story I will say that I found it to be a little bit on the long side when I was getting to like the middle of the book I felt like the story could have been wrapped up a little bit faster but the ending just totally made it worth it. I did not see it coming at all. From the very beginning, you know that there's something that happened at trivia night. You flash back in time, like, to the beginning of the school year, then you move forward to this trivia night, and so then you finally see, like, trivia night happen, and you see the events occur, and I definitely did not see it coming, so it definitely gets points for that as well. So originally I thought that this was just going to be some sort of like light fluffy read, but there's definitely a lot more going on in here than you would expect, and I definitely think that it provides a really great point of view into parenting. I don't think I'm necessarily like the ideal audience for this book, but I think that if you are a parent, this book will be a comfort to you because I think it provides a great point of view in the anxieties and difficulties of being especially a mom and having to raise a kid with so many eyes on you and so many just judgmental people in the world passing judgment on the way that everyone raises their kids and stuff like that. It's just really interesting and something that I've never really read before and I definitely appreciate it for that. So yeah, that was Big Little Lies. And then the final book that I read was The Clothing of Books by Jim Ligiri, and this is just a tiny little essay collection about book covers and book jackets. I really enjoyed this. It's literally just J Jim Ligiri talking about her experiences with book covers. It starts off with her talking about clothing in general and her experience with clothing and how much she loves things like uniforms and stuff like that for various reasons. And then she goes into how book jackets are like clothing for books and she talks about you know her experiences being an author and having these covers picked out for your books and you not really having a say in how that turns out necessarily and she also just talks about the relationship she has as like a reader and how she's purchased books before just purely based on the cover and how the covers have sort of entranced her. She talks about like the utility factor, like what's the purpose behind a book cover, both in the beginning as a way to like protect the physical book itself, but also as, you know, a way to market the book. There's also the fact that a book cover is supposed to communicate something to a reader. It's a lot of stuff had talked about in this really tiny little essay collection. I don't know if I would necessarily say like run out and buy it right away. If you're a Jhumpa Lahiri fan like me, it definitely is worth reading. And if you can get your hands on a copy, I think it's worth it, but it isn't like, you know, full-blown story. Don't expect that. It's just tiny little 75 pages meditation on book covers, but I really enjoyed it. So yeah, that was my bout of books. I'm currently in the middle of Cannery Row by John Steinbeck, and I'm really enjoying it, but I'm only like eight chapters in or so, and I'm going to like not rush through this because John Steinbeck's writing is just so beautiful. I want to take my time with this one. I'll probably finish it before the week's out, but I'm kind of glad that I saved this one for later because I definitely don't want to feel rushed with this book, but it's fantastic so far. I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, that's everything for Vada Books. Definitely let me know down below if you're participating in Vada Books, how your week went in reading. The next readathon that I plan on taking part in is 24 and 48. I will have a link down below to that website in case you're interested, and I believe Diversathon is also happening at the end of the month if I'm not mistaken. I really like readathons, especially at the beginning of the year. One, because I get a lot of reading done in January in general just because it's cold outside but this just helps like propel that even more but also it's a good way to sort of get stuff done for your reading goals. So yeah that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.